Hi, this is Griff Lampkin. Um, you're in, we're in the friendly confines of the McLean Rack and Health Club. And uh, we're going to talk a minute today about hitting on the backboard as being a great opportunity for everybody at all skill levels to make big headway in their games. Uh, one of the stories I'm going to tell you a little bit about today is a, the, a friend of mine that goes way back to when I was a high school kid before, named John Damon. And John was a uh, at maybe tenth on his high school team, and during his, and he was determined. He tried out in the spring, and he barely made it. And he was determined at the end of the summer to become a really good tennis player. And so, boy, beginning in September, I would see John practicing against the wall every day, um, and he would do go through a, a variety of drills, and he he would become a much better player over the course of the following summer. In fact, he was one of the top ranked uh, high school players in the Middle Atlantic region. So these drills are drills that John did, the ground stroke drills, to develop his skills and go from being an average high school player to being one of the best players in the Middle Atlantic section. So the, when, when John would hit against the backboard, the first thing that he would do was designate a place on the wall in general to aim at to develop his consistency and control. So, so let, we're just going to use this sign as a, uh, as a um, aiming point. We're going to aim a little bit of right of the sign, and uh, that will allow us to give us enough net clearance so that we are hitting over the net. Of course, that's important when you play. And a lot of times, you'll have white lines that go across the walls you're hitting at, and you want to aim what approximately two feet above the white line. So, so what John would move, he'd, he'd start up relatively close and the idea was that he was going to be working on his reaction and his contact point out in front and try to consistently get, get the ball up over the net and wa watch the ball and keep his head still. And you also are working on balance at the same time and timing. You'll notice that I'm trying to do this on one bounce. So he's going to try to see how many four hands in a, in a row. He could hit it on one bounce. So here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I, I'm going to stop after ten. Um, Sing, let's just assume after five, ten to fifteen minutes that that you, that's the best you could do was ten in a row on one bounce. Well, you, then you finish just four hands for the day, okay? And you the next day or, or the next two days, whenever you get back out, you're going to try to uh, beat that number. You know, and uh, John actually got up to 242 in a row. I saw him do it, and so it's it's. It, developing that consistent timing and skill will help you in, in many different parts of the front part of the court uh, in the, your mid-court game. So after he completed the forehands, then he would switch to backhands and try to hit, see how many backhands he could hit in a row. Um, and he would do that against that same area that he aimed at before. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start with my backhands. Ready? One. I will stop with that, and that, let's just assume that's the highest number you get. And then you can come back the next day and see if you can beat that number. Always trying to aim at that specific target. So now you're, you've done your 10 in a row with the forehand and 10 in a row with the backhand. Then you try to do both ways. So what we're doing here is, is having to go from the forehand contact point in balance to the backhand contact point of balance. And it really makes a big difference how fast you can prepare for the ball in a fast moving doubles game if you can prepare quickly and get the contact point in front. So here we go, we're gonna see how many alternating between forehand and backhand. We're still aiming at that same sign on the wall, okay? Ready, here we go. One, two, three, four, I'll stop 
at that and point out that, that this is one of the more difficult things to do. Don't be surprised if you, you know, are hitting the ball all over the place that you end up having to start all over again. And, but it's worth being patient and continuing to work on it with your target in mind because you will find yourself preparing quicker and being able to hit the ball cleaner going back and forth between these two strokes. So the combination of forehands and backhands that John finished up with was then would be the end of what he worked on with his ground strokes. And he would do this relentlessly. He would do it uh, as long as he felt he could to try to develop his game. And his ground strokes were amazing by the time he had reached the, the following summer. The, so in your practice exercise, you just all you have to do is do the, those two combinations. You probably don't have to do it more than a half an hour. And you'll have, build up a lot of different things in your stroke. You'll build up your contact point. You'll work on lifting the ball over the net. You'll work on watching it, balance, footwork, reaction time. It covers pretty much all the bases for both forehand and backhand. And when you do them both together, you'll be able to switch back and forth quick, quicker and be able to react faster in match play. Okay, so that wraps up the ground strokes, but next uh, video is going to be on the volleys. You really don't want to miss that one. I promise we, I will make a difference with your volleys.